Hey, how's it going guys? In this map I love tutorial, I'm going to show you how to toggle the visibility of each graph using legend. Alright, so let me just give you a quick demo before we go into the tutorial so you know what we'll be doing in this exercise. So I have a figure, and in this figure I have a, a very simple graph. In this figure, I have a line graph and a dark graph. And the dark graph has uh, multiple points along each uh, line data point. Now if I hover my mouse to the legend, I can toggle the visibility based on the item I'm selecting. So if I uh, toggle the line graph, I can set the visibility of the line graph. And if I click on the dot legend, so here I can toggle between the visibility based on the legend uh, items. Now let me close the window. In my script, I'm going to import my libraries. So I input the NumPy library as MP. And let me increase the font size. All right. Now import the mapplot.pyplot as PLT. Once we import the libraries, we can create our figure and the axis object by using the plot pyplot library. In this case, it will be plt.subplots. Inside the subplots method, I want to uh, resize my figure. I want to fix size property. I want to set the uh, size to 12 by 8. And to show the graph, we'll type plt.show. Now if I run the script, and this is my current window size. Now let me close this and continue. I'll start by creating my y-axis data points. I'm going to randomly generate my data points by using the numpy library dot random dot rent int. I want to generate a list of uh, random number between zero and a hundred. And here you can set the uh, the data point size. I'll set the data point size to fifty. And that's for our y data points. Now I want to create my x-axis data points. And again, I'll use the numpy library dot random. And this time I'm going to use the choice function. Since my x axis data points is going to be from 0 to 50 based on the uh, data size of my y axis data points. So I'm going to generate a list of numbers from 0 to 49. So I'll use the arrange method. It should be a range. And I want to graph my array size of my y object. And here we can uh, randomly set the choice size. We can choose if we want to randomly select 10 different data points, or do you want to select 25 data points randomly? So it's up to you. I'm going to set the size to 10. So that means in my graph, I'll only have 10 different data points for the dots graph. Now I can create my graph. I want to create the line graph first. So I'll take the axis object dot plot. I'll insert the white data points. And it's going to be a line graph. So I'll insert the hyphen uh, symbol. And for the legend label, I want to name the item line. Now I want to graph my dots graph. Oh, make sure that you insert the comma after the object name. And I'll do the same thing for the dot plot, except that this time I'll insert my uh, x axis label first, then my y axis data points. For the y axis data points, we need to assign the value based on the x array value. And to explicitly to insert our data points as different uh, dots, we need to insert letter O to represent that this is going to be a dot graph. For the label, I'm going to name my legend as dot. Now if I graph my graph, and this is what we have so far. We have our line graph and our dots graph that are randomly embedded to different uh, data points along our line graph. The next item on my agenda is to create the legend. To insert legend, I'll take the plt object dot legend. I'll set the location to upper right. And I want to name the output legend. 
we know in our legend we have two items. One is the uh, line label, the other one is the dots label. Oh, and here I have a typo, should be legend. And I want to grab those two labels and I want to assign those two labels to two different separate objects. To do that, I will create two objects. I will name the first object line legend. The second object is going to be dot legend. And to grab uh, each label item from the legend, from the legend object, I want to use the get lines method and to extract the label items. <clears throat> Next, I need to uh, configure the label object. First, I need to set the picker setting to two. This setting allows me to configure when I click on the legend label, how the label will behave. And I can also set the uh, radius. And here I'll use the set pick radius method. And I'll set the area to 10. And I'll do the same thing for dot legend. If we go to the MapPerlib documentation, and this page uh, gives a pretty good description on different events and how to uh, handle different MapPerlib events. Now if I scroll towards the middle, it should not in the middle, uh, should be somewhere around the top. Here's a list of events that we can use. Now I want to use the pick event. The pick event allows me to uh, trigger a signal or event that Every time I click on an object, it belongs to the MapPerlib library. So from plt.connect, I want to insert the event name, pick event. And the pick event has one parameter. It's going to pass the event parameter. So for example, if I insert a Lombada function, I will assign a parameter called event. Now if I print the event uh, argument. Now if I launch my graph, and here I have a typo. Oh, it should be dots. Let me move my window to the top right hand corner. Now if I click on any of the legend uh, item. Oops, here let me move that, okay. Why click on the legend label item? The pick up event object is going to fire. And all we need to do is we just need to create a function to handle our graph. Let me make a copy of line 20 and I'll come out this line right here. Here I'll create a function called unpick and we'll have a parameter called event. From the events argument, I want to grab the others object first. So events dot others. And this will pass the legend item object information. So I want to grab the visibility uh, value first. So legend dot get visible. And it's gonna be a method. And we'll assign the output as is visible. And outside the function, I want to create a dictionary first. I will name the dictionary graphs. Because here we'll only uh, interact with the legends, we'll not actually interact with the graph. So we need to use the dictionary to link the legends and the graphs together. So from the graphs dictionary, I want to store the line object to the line legend uh, dictionary key. And I'll do the same for the dots. Now let's go back to the unpick um, function. And once we have the isVLT value, we can now uh, take the graphs uh, dictionary. We will assign the legend key. And we can use the set visible method. 
And all we need to do is we just need to set the absolute value of the is visible value. And we need to do that to two different places. One is the graph and one is the legend. So here, uh, legend that sets visible. And it's going to be not is visible. And we need to redraw the graph. So figure canvas dot draw. And it's going to be a method. Now we just need to replace the Lombarda function with the unpick function. And that's it. Now if I launch the graph, and if I click on anywhere on the graph, nothing's going to happen. Now if I click on the legend item, so I'll click on the line item first. And that's going to set the, oops, and my legend just disappeared. Let me take a look. Let me try rename the legend object to LEG. So if I click on the dust legend label, and it's going to set the visibility of my dust data point. Same with the line label. All right, so this is everything I want to share in this video. And this is a technique that I found really useful when I'm working with multiple graphs. And if I only want to see a couple graphs that I'm interested in, then I can use this technique to hide the graphs that I don't want to see. And I'll post a link to the source code in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.